So it's kind of been a while since I did a Studio Ghibli movie review, but I'm back to continue them with The Wind Rises. This is apparently another one of the, one of Gib the Ghibli movies that was said to be a very last movie ever, but they just have making more afterwards. Anyway, the first time I saw this, I thought it was okay, but I did acknowledge that it was a well-made movie, and I thought, and I really appreciated how it goes it was in regard to the fact of what they're trying to do and, and the fact that this is another more mature Ghibli movie that doesn't have, a, have that much going on. But like, what I, but like a lot of the other Ghibli movies I've reviewed, I rewatched it again recently and it did actually get a bit better for me. I think the reason a lot of these have gotten a bit better for me on the second view and it because when you watch a movie the first time you're kind of paying attention to the story and trying to follow along and understand it and when you see it a second time you know what's gonna happen so you can enjoy it more and take in more of the great aspects about it depending on the movie you're watching. Yeah, and I think back what and I think back what what it was like for me with a lot of these. So moving on to the movie show, I remember first hearing about this year ago you know, and not being all that interested like a lot of the other Ghibli movies. But these days I'm glad I decided to finally watch yeah, and all of the others as well. And it's been great to see my thoughts on the on this one change in particular. Anyway, moving on to the story, it follows a guy in Japan named Jiro who who had a dream of designing an airplane to be made. This also takes place in World War II and so Japan is really poor and he's trying to do what he what he loves with designing planes while all, while all sorts of things happen around him. Like an earthquake happens, he meets a girl and they start to fall in love and there's a whole bunch of trouble going on with the military. So like what I've said for a few of the other Ghibli movies, this is another one that's super realistic and not only that, but I heard this is actually based on a true story, so that's interesting. And speaking of, even though I usually don't care that much for stories like this, the way this movie does it and tells it story makes it even, makes it even some of the more traditional stuff that I would usually find boring, very interesting. Something that I think helps with that is the fact that a lot of the characters in it are very relatable. What I mean by that is that a lot of the movie is spent with Zero trying to do everything he can to, to do what he loves and so and because he has this huge dream of making and designing airplanes and how that uh, and uh, all the problems going on around him but he's trying to push through to be able to you know, keep going. Even, even though there's a lot of there are a lot of moments of him and the other characters having just kind of normal, just kind of traditional conversations about the days of things around them. Somehow they still manage to find a way to keep it engaging and not to be incorrect. Thing. And they do it where you can also feel sorry for him in different ways too because a lot of his creation keeps failing but he keeps trying to get back or with the design and make the best plane, the best plane that he can. And it's made even better because he's also doing it with his friends and you really like their relationship too and they try to help each other. It's like what I've been saying for a lot of the other Ghibli movies where even though there's not that much going on and you're just watching people have, have casual conversations Thing, but they still have a, a great dialogue to help keep it fascinating. I think I also appreciate the fact that they don't ignore the repercussions of the 
Ukraine to me. I think this is Second World War II it, and it's about making claims. They explain how this could take so many lives and cause many people to be killed. It's actually at the end when they show Jiro having a dream of plane crashing and you see him talking to someone he admires and, and how when he has people flying his plane he worries about how they could never come back down alive and so I admire the fact that they don't ignore the fact that the, that the pilot could die and that this is something that could kill so many people. So I totally give them shoes for that for having it and so that they keep it realistic and that they face the realities of it. So in terms of the whole stuff with that, I like that. If there were one, if there was one thing about the film that I didn't like all that much, if the, if the romance between Jiro and the girl named Nahako, I don't know, it wasn't terrible, but I didn't really care for and all that much like I have a lot of the other Ghibli romance and I also felt kind of rut and not really that earned. Maybe it has something to do with it making it more faithful to whatever the true story was and so whatever that was and whatever the romance was there but I do think it was the least aspect of the whole movie. I think that also affects the runtime a bit too because um because the movie itself is like two hours and six minutes long and while I give the respect for making a lot of it be involved in the creation of the plane, the whole like romance thing did make it feel like it was going on a bit too long. I will say though it was pretty tragic by the end because I'm pretty sure it's implied that Nahuko died and so it does work in that way so you do feel sorry for them in that way as well. But aside from that, I still really admire a lot of the film and how it plays out. I love how they somehow keep the concept of the movie that I generally wouldn't find very interesting, very entertaining. Again, how they address different things like Jiro's love for his work and his creation really help bring this them to life for me. Speaking of, kind of like what I said about my review for Grave of the Firefly, the animation helps with that to be uh, it's a lot more realistic and so it complements the whole movie and they do a, and they do great effect with it too, like the earthquake scene. The dubbing is all so incredible here and again, the fact that this is more realistic, the voice acting just helps make the dialogue more interesting than I would usually expect, like Joseph Jordan Levitt has zero, Emily Run has not at home, John Trudinsky at here, at Hero and, and uh, Martin Short at Kurokawa. Everyone is still just a perfectly packed as the other Ghibli movies. Really, I just feel like this is another great example of how Ghibli movies can tackle any kind of movie and subject matter and make it very enjoyable no matter why. So, yeah, despite this, despite this not being the traditional fantasy kind of story like a lot of the other Ghibli movies, I would still highly recommend checking this one out because it is still really entertaining for, for everything they do. And I'm really glad I did check it out again. So, yeah guys, so that, overall that really is my review for The Wind Rising. And so, yeah, one as always, thank you all so much for watching. And I hope you all liked this video. If you did, then please like this video. Please comment down below to tell me what you think. Please follow me on Twitter at Daniel Maloney, Hey Hayes and Disney fan, Ryu Kingdom Hearts and Disney Quiz every day. And if you know someone who might like my content, then please help share my channel in any way you can to help my channel grow. And please subscribe for more content like this coming soon, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.